All right, so back here in Android Studio, what we want to do is uh, take out uh, Java and double click on main. And this is where we specified our font change. Just underneath it, we want to paste the following. So control V to paste, set class to import, hit OK, and that is it. So I'm going to attempt to make sure I link these somewhere in description or near this video so that you can just paste it in. Uh, so Basically, I'm not going to explain every single thing that's happening here, but just the general idea of what's happening, uh, you know, in this block of code. Essentially, what we're doing is we're taking, first of all, when you have red areas like this, you need to uh, make these so that they're reflecting the actual variables or the names of the, um, the text view, for example. So this is not correct. Uh, the ID of our text view is actually called text view. And so we paste that in there. And result view, we're going to put a new line up here just after this portion right here and call this declare it as a text view. So text view, result view. All right, and then that redness goes away. And then get data is called to a function that we have to create afterwards. So we'll worry about that in a second. Um, and then I put a comment here for button stuff. So uh, the button's ID is button for our button that we click. And then it says insert set on click listener. And that basically says listen to or, or whatever goes in here go ahead and execute what's inside of here, get data. So you see we have get data running twice. So the first time the phone loads up, uh, this part's gonna get run. This isn't because the button hasn't been clicked. So uh, when someone clicks the button, it's gonna going to run the same function again. So, and, and again, that function is basically gonna connect to the database and it's going to run that PHP file in order to grab that quote. And basically it's getting the output of that PHP file. So hopefully that all in all kind of makes sense. It's not necessary that you understand exactly what's going on with each line at this point, especially if you're a beginner. So before we get to the get data and setting that up, we need to set up a permissions in our Android manifest. And so basically right here, just above application, we need to put in uses dash permission. So we'll click on that. Android name, and we want to specify internet right here. And close that up. Very simple. All right, so let's go back to our main Java file. And now what we need to do is come down here and we're going to paste in just uh, underneath this portion right here, the closing, the final bracket here, what we're going to do is uh, paste in quite a lengthy uh, amount of code. So I'm going to try to remember to also, you know, get that something so that you can paste that in, add it as an annotation or a link that you can uh, access and just copy. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in right here. See, we have a bunch of red lines over the place, but say basically it's saying public void get data. So we just named it right here and it's being referenced up here. No longer is it red because now we've uh, created it down here. Um, so just real quick. All right, so if you alt left, well, one second here. Sorry, you hover over and hit alt enter and alt enter and keep on doing this a bunch of times. Let's see here. That's one second here. And we're eventually getting pretty close to where we're getting all ri rid of those by hitting Alt Enter. So now it should basically look like this. So over here, the part that uh, so basically, what I mean, what this is doing is saying try and then catch. Try means you know it's trying to execute this code. If it doesn't work, then you know give us some type of information about how you know why it didn't work. So where it says re result view, which is declared up here which is our text view, the big, the large text that we have in the center. It's saying if it doesn't connect, then it's going to say in that text 
uh, field could not can connect to the database. So this, what this does is it all this code is it connects and attempts to get this information here. Um, and then try, and, and there's another try and catch. And this basically never changes here. Like whenever you're trying to pull information from a PHP file, this code remains the same. So I'm not going to try to explain all of it. Basically right here it says result equals SB to string. So result is the variable that's created that will contain the quote. Um, another catch over here, error converting result. And then finally one more try in result view. That's referencing our um, our result or our text view that's in the center of the app. Um, set text result. And result right here is declared right there. So it's setting the result from this up here. All right, so hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, and then if it doesn't work for some reason, couldn't set text, damn it, okay. All right, so hopefully at this point, I should be just about it. Um, so what I did just did now is hit play and I launched it on the phone and guess what? It worked, surprisingly. Usually you run into a bunch of issues, but no, I ran through this beforehand, so that it wasn't the case. Usually, if you're um, starting from scratch, uh, yeah, you'll run into issues, so expect that to happen. Now, one thing I did notice is I do need to make one change on the layout here for Activity Main. Um, let's see here. I may actually want to bring the center vertical back. Sorry about that. Save that. And I'm going to launch it again just to be sure it worked pr properly. And just on pause. And fortunately that didn't have much of an effect. So what I did was I I pulled this down so that when I brought it down we could see this green arrow cr going across the center. That's what ultimately helped. Uh, and, and once I run, ran it, now it's pretty much perfectly in the center between quote fuel and this button. And yeah, everything works. So you, I click on the button and it shows up. And that's exactly what we want. All right. So another thing that I wanted to do is, uh, you know when you tilt your phone, it will automatically switch to the portrait mode. Uh, you can sh do the same thing right here and it will kind of emulate that. Um, just the way it looked, I didn't really like it. So if you ever want to force a particular screen orientation, whether it be portrait or uh, the, uh, why is it coming to mind? Landscape, sorry. Uh, you can go into Android Manifest and under activity for splash in main, we're just worried about uh, main. You can put in uh, two areas, two, two lines, Android screen orientation equals portrait and then set Android config changes, orientation, keyboard hidden. If you do that and you save and hit play, you'll see that the screen orientation uh, cannot be changed from portrait even if you slant the phone. Uh, so that's just a quick tip right there. All right, so that's it. Uh, check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet, and check out the YouTube channel, which is designcourse.com slash user slash designcourse. And also, most importantly, I uh, definitely check out designcourse.com slash premium and that is the service which I train you one-on-one -on -one through Design Course Mentor how to become a better designer. I also have other products here. I'm going to be adding more in the future. This is a visual identity design course that covers logo design uh, and, and, and branding and all things that have to do with a company's visual image and also wise banner which is a photoshop banner maker and you can obviously check this out all on your own just to see what this is all about and yeah so that is it so hopefully you enjoyed the course i uh, i will see you next time all right goodbye